Elena, the Feast of the Dormition of the Most Holy Mother of God is on the 15th of August every year. How about we learn about her life today? Yes, that's a good idea, Mary Lynn. Let's start with her birth and her parents. Okay, let's ask some of our friends about this. Saint Joachim and Nana, the parents of Mary, could not have children. As they got older, they prayed harder to God to give them a child and promised to offer their child to God. The Lord heard their prayers and Saint Nana gave birth to a beautiful girl. They named her Mary. Amazing! God answered the pure prayers of Saints Joachim and Anna and gave them a holy child. So how was Mary offered to God by her parents? Let's ask our friends at the Saint Nicholas Parish. At the age of three, Mary was brought into the Temple of God to serve the Lord by her parents Saint Joachim and Anna. She was welcomed into the Temple by Saint Zacharias, the High Priest. Mary stayed there until she was 12 years old and she was brought up in the Holy Scriptures. We learn from the child Mary to love God, to keep His Word, to pray and to live according to the Holy Bible. Wow, Mary was so holy even as a young child. So how did she find out she would become the Mother of God? Let's ask our friends from the Saints Michael and Gabriel Parish. Mary was engaged to a pious man named Joseph. The angel Gabriel appeared to her in Nazareth to announce that she would give birth to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, through the Holy Spirit. Mary believed the angel's word and said, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. The Virgin Mary trusted in the Lord and was obedient to him. So, what did Mary do after the announcement from Saint Gabriel? Let's ask our friends at the Saint George Parish. After the Annunciation, Mary went to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard her greeting, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth was pregnant with St. John the Baptist. That's right! At the visitation, Elizabeth said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, which is known as the Magnificat. So beautiful! So the next part of Mary's life was the birth of baby Jesus. Let's ask our friends at the Saints Peter and Paul Parish. Mary went with Joseph to his town of Bethlehem to register their names in the census. And it was time for Mary to give birth. She gave birth to the child Jesus in a cave because they could not find another place to stay. Then. Forty days after the birth of Jesus, Joseph and Mary brought him to the temple of Jerusalem to present him to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice of two young pigeons. An old man named Simeon, who was guided by the Holy Spirit, received Jesus in his arms and spoke the prophecy about the divine child. Yes, that's right. Simeon told Mary that a sword will pierce her soul, referring to the crucifixion of her son, Jesus. As Jesus grew up, the bond between him and his mother Mary grew stronger, and we can see this at Christ's first miracle at the wedding of Cana. Let's ask our friends at the St. Michael's Parish about this. Mary was invited with the Lord Jesus to a wedding at the village of Cana in Galilee. She realized that there was not enough wine, and she told Jesus. She then said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Jesus turned the water into wine. The Virgin Mary intercedes for us to Jesus. Her intercessions are always answered because she never asks anything for herself. One of the most difficult times in Mary's life was the crucifixion and death of her son, Jesus, on the cross. Let's ask our friends at the St. John's Parish about this. Mary was crying under the cross. Next to her stood John the Evangelist. The Lord Jesus said to her, Woman, here is your son. And, and to John, he said, here is your mother. She became the mother of everyone who loves Jesus. So that's how the Virgin Mary became the mother of all of us. She stays with us through prayer. So, what was Mary's life like after Christ died on the cross? 
Let's ask our friends at the St. Elias Parish. Three days after Christ's death on the cross, very early on Sunday morning, Mary came with the myrrh-bearing women to the tomb of Christ. But they found it empty and an angel told them that Christ was risen. That is why we do not fear death, but we rejoice in the resurrection. So now we come to the falling asleep of Mary. We fast from the first to the 14th of August, and on the 15th of August, we celebrate her Dormition. Let's ask our friends at the St. Mary's Dormition Parish about this event. After the ascension of Christ, Mary stay in Jerusalem, living a holy life, praying that all besides her son Jesus visited and preached at. As Mary was nearing the end of her life, the angel Gabriel appeared to her and told her she would fall asleep in three days. This news brought her joy as she would finally see her son Jesus again. So she started preparing for her Dormition. The apostles miraculously came on clouds from around the world where they were preaching to be by her side. They were sad to hear her earthly life was coming to an end. But Mary consoled them, saying she would pray for everyone from heaven. At the moment of her death, Jesus Christ appeared in his glory, cradling the soul of his mother, the Theotokos, and ever-Virgin Mary. After three days, her body was not found in the tomb because Jesus had taken to him. St. Thomas arrived three days after the dormition of the Theotokos and he was upset so he asked to go to a tomb and pray to comfort him and most holy a mother of God gave him her belt. If we remain faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ we shall not die but shall receive eternal life. Blessed feast of the dormition of the most holy mother of God now let's listen to the Traparion for the Dormition. In your giving birth you retained your virginity and in Dormition 